Hello, everyone. This is Arkatsuke. I am joined today by one of the more um, unique individuals I've met on the internet, the Phantom Lion. Would you care to introduce yourself? Well, it's been a long time since I've been live. And my name is Phantom Lion, as you said. It is really the only name that I feel comfortable with. Okay. And as I said before uh, we started, I'm not entirely sure what exactly this conversation is going to be, but you contacted me and you were simply too unique to ignore. So <laughs> I definitely wanted to see um, where this went. So. Um, obviously, you are, should I say, you have a rather unique visage. Um, so, you know, some it's one thing to have an elaborate avatar, but you appear to have taken that to the next level. Um, I know that you, you've told me in the past that this is more or less how you feel. This is your true self, and that everything else is sort of the illusion, I believe you said, or, you know, the what you tell other people. Would that be about right? an illusion illusions are what people create every single day mm -hmm. illusions illusions are crafted by the mind without people even realizing it when one person meets another as soon as they have one look at their face, a laundry list of prejudices and past experiences is going to tell that person's brain who that person is or, ex or at least what they might think that person to be. So I kind of like to knock all of that uh, way of thinking right out of their fucking brains. Mm, I see. By taking control by of the image, the first thing that someone sees, essentially, like I said, a living avatar deciding at every stage of the conversation what the person will see first, which is definitely outside of the norm. It's a very unique, I won't call it off-putting, but it is dramatic is probably the better word. Um, it clearly has a lot of thought put into it. And I'm curious how you, you've been, you've been on YouTube a lot longer than I have, actually. Um, how long have you been doing this? Well, for, for, uh, off and on, about, about eight years, something like that. I was obviously more active back then mm. than I am now, but I'm yeah. looking. I'm looking to change that. So, what exactly inspired you to? I mean, don't I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but so, some people might consider what you're doing to be a rather extreme form of cosplay. Now, I know that you're going to say that's not what you're doing, and I'm not <laughs> accused of it. beneath this space 
in a very long time. It's, it's really no use pretending to be that person now, especially after this long. Basically, there are a plethora of things that I don't believe have anything to do with me whatsoever. Hmm. With this, because I created it, I feel that it is more me. See, like an artist, artists like to express themselves in their work. So this is just me expressing my truer self on the outside. I have heard that before from a number of people um, and a number of different kinds of people. Well, and it's good I, to see that I'm not alone. Then. I'm well, not, no, not, no, not at all. The internet is full of unique people, as you, as you, as you can see, and as you, anyone who has no, ever talked on my channel can tell you, we're all unique individuals. Some of us more unique than others. Um, I want to ask you: Do you feel that this? persona of your well not i understand i'm going to call it a persona not because i know for you it's it's the more real but i just know that's the easiest way to refer to the sort of again shape that you've chosen to take do you see that this is this character that you inhabit this identity that you've constructed for yourself a form how i guess what i want to say is it how is it different than say furries who when they choose their persona they believe that that is their you know their truer self their you know that the part of them that they want to construct and i'm not likening you to furries just that you have chosen to adopt a non-humanoid very carefully constructed uh form to convey your personality through well, obviously, there is one thing that me and the fuzzballs have in common, is that neither one of us were born like this. Me, personally, I can only speak for myself, I can't speak for them, but I, I believe that monsters are made, they are not... Uh, no one is born a monster. I was slowly over time pushed onto this path. I just uh, had I just had a very big hand in designing the visage. Now that's interesting that you'd use the word monster. Do you see yourself as monstrous? Well, that's what people have told me. So might as well fucking own it. Okay. So do you see the the uh, visage, let's call it, uh, instead of persona, do you see the visage that you have adopted as a... What, what is the point that you're trying to convey with it? <laughs> point. Cats. Can I call you cats? That's what most people call me. Go right ahead. Cats. Point. I might have, <laughs> there might have been a point when I started Cats, but uh, this, uh, at, at the present, Cats, uh, <laughs> it just is. <laughs> I don't care about making points anymore. <laughs> <laughs>
I do know why I don't do this. I don't do this for other people. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the people watching are going to be very entertained by this. Your viewers might be very entertained by me, but I don't I'll let you know a little secret. I don't do it for their entertainment. I never have. I never will. Mm -hmm. I do it. I do it for the same reason that dogs lick their balls. Hmm. Because they can. Okay. So do you see, is there a performance art aspect to what you do? <sighs> no, really. I mean, if, if people... <sighs> well, I think life in general, to a degree, life requires a bit of performance art. It's a it's a common trope in certain theories about uh, performativity, I believe is the word they use, uh, whether they be feminists or any number of people. It's a perfectly good word, even if idiots often use it. But there's something to be said for the idea that all interactions with people is based on some level of performance and artifice, since we're not telepaths just blasting our thoughts directly into each other's skulls. At least not yet. No, no, that would be scary. Yeah, Bluetooth taken to the whole new level. Brain tooth. <laughs> I'm sure something to that effect is feasible in the next hundred years or so. But um, if I'm still around for that, I'm just not sure I'm ready to have my brain opened up to other people. Since the internet has already demonstrated a certain level of, should we say detrimental effects on the collective psyche of society it has positive aspects definitely i've met some amazing people and it allows people to connect in a very granular way that on specific interests and causes that they would never normally be able to do across big time and space but i don't know if the human brain is particularly equipped for the level of connectivity that the internet gives us, the constant connection to other people and information and stimulation, I think it's kind of making us all a little bit crazy. Well, <laughs> that's, um, I suppose at this, at this point, uh, being crazy is kind of quaint. Yeah, insanity is like sanity is sort of relative. As much as I hate to use the, the trope of everything being on a spectrum, um, I feel like crazy is kind of like pornography. It's rather difficult to precisely define it, but you know it when you see it. Well, I believe a, a Supreme Court justice used that definition for pornography, and I never found a better one myself. <laughs> well at the rate this world is going. I wouldn't be surprised if they started putting rubber rooms on every street corner. <laughs> yeah, you know, safe, safe spaces, just insert your credit card, and, you know, there you are, panic away. Um, yeah, Run right next to your local Starbucks. Mm -hmm. It's funny, you know, Starbucks is taking out bathrooms in a lot of their locations, um, largely because their, uh, their policy of trying to be overly open after the variety of social media blunders. Now they are opening up micro Starbucks that you order with an app and they have, and you pick up your coffee and they don't have seats. They don't have chairs. They just, it's, you know, just a counter that you pull, pull up to and take your coffee. And it's interesting how yet again, that's an example of like the internet sort of taking something which you'd assume is simple and straightforward coffee shops and, you know, places that people spend time in have bathrooms. But now because of the internet, people are finding that more and more difficult to do. Well, you've brought up a very interesting point. Well, it's, Who's to blame for all this? I don't know if you can blame anyone. Well, it's, people are being blamed now, Cats. Oh, yeah. 
blamed. Oh yeah, no, people are trying to blame individuals and certain individuals play certain roles, but I feel like it's a collective transformation that's happening almost on the cultural subatomic level, you could say. The very fabric of human society is being fundamentally altered by the presence of connectivity that was not evolutionary possible. Fabric. Fabric. <laughs> there's no there's no fabric of society anymore. There's just um, mm, I, there's, I, uh, it's like a society's like a tottered little doll tumbling down the street. That's one way to look at it. And I think there are definitely aspects of society that fit that. There's always there is definitely, in my opinion at least, a fabric. There, By the very nature of people living together in the same area, there's always some sort of fabric. Now the texture can change, the composition can change, and it's not all fabrics are good fabrics. Not all fabrics function as, for their designed applications. Some of them tear, some of them are abrasive, uh, some of them are just, you know, very irritating. But there is a fabric nonetheless, and it's in a constant state of change based on the various members, the various fibers, you could call them, that make well, it up. The thing about fabrics is that they burn. No, yeah, they can. Yeah, everything can burn. Well, I will say this. If we're talking about blending in, and that's what I do. I, I want to answer a question that you asked about performance art. I feel like I kind of tap danced around that. I apologize. Not at all. But um, I feel that I do more acting when I go out into the world, when I walk out this door. Mm -hmm. and uh, Because this is the real you, and the one that you present to the world is the construction. Yeah. When I go out these two doors, when I go out those doors, that ends the real me. When I'm out there, that is the performance art. Hmm. At this point, um, I'm tempted to order an Oscar to my door. <laughs> no, I, I'm not, I, not to boast or anything, but the level of restraint that I compose myself with out in the real world um I, I don't give myself enough credit for i really don't um, hmm. it, it's interesting that you've created an inverse narrative to the way a lot of people well no no i take that back because most people i imagine would say that their private self is their true self but they don't usually manifest it quite as conspicuously as you do let's say like the fact that you've actually chosen a physical form to create a hard divide between the real you quote unquote and the outer you the social you well as far as I'm, as far as i'm concerned if, if i had it my way I would be Phantom Lion. I would be in this form all the mm -hmm. time. Uh, now, what is what is different about Phantom Lion versus whoever you are out in the social world? Well, out in the social world, um, people barely, barely noticed me and unless I'm in their way. Mm -hmm. um, hell, even even the dating world um and this is hilarious i find this quite quite interesting i put up a dating profile for for lion for me mm -hmm. and then i i did another dating profile like a year ago months ago with my public persona mm -hmm. I barely got any fucking, I barely got any responses. 
barely. But as soon as Phantom Lion gets one, uh, the thing is, I did it as like a joke. I did it as like, um, hey, Phantom Lion's available. <laughs> I did it as a joke, but I got, I, genuine, I got genuine responses as Phantom Lion. Genuine interest. Well, that makes all the sense in the world because, I mean, we spend a great deal of time and energy trying to distinguish ourselves from others in some way to attract attention because there's a lot of us and people have limited attention and it's difficult to connect with them. So, of course, choosing a to put forward a, a much more dramatic and memorable uh, persona, by visage, is going to attract attention if nothing else just because it's much harder to ignore the same reason why the male birds in the wild will choose very dramatic plumage and colors because it gets the attention of in their case the chicks quite literally <laughs> but um yeah you know it is always interesting to see what people decide to do with uh -huh. themselves well, the, the thing is, thing is, um, with that, it, well, <sighs> that's that's not entirely if uh, an accurate statement. I I got some replies as my public self, but most mm -hmm. of them, most of them were none because I didn't know how to really. Um, I didn't know how to like. You see, I don't like to, I don't like gender to really have an equation. I really don't see myself as okay. A, I don't see myself as a man or a woman. We'll get to that. We'll get to that later. But okay, I was trying to fuck around with the gender, and I just said fuck it. I'll leave it blank, and that led to a lot of guys liking my public persona. And of hmm. course, of course, everyone's gay for Phantom Lion. <laughs> um, even if you're a woman, you're gay for Phantom Lion. That's well, just like Pe just like PewDiePie was fond of saying, like you know, women can have big PP too. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I mean, not that I wasn't interested in the men on there, but it's just I don't know. It's just I wasn't. So you swing pretty wide. It sounds like. Well, I mean. I'll bat for any team that I'll have. <laughs> You're a free agent, I see. <laughs> I'm a free. I'm a free operative. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's. Like, now, do you have? Do you have any kind of preference? Um, as long as you consent, I'm game. Okay. As long as you can legally consent, you see, there's a lot of things that I don't have a preference for. Mm hmm. Well, yeah, legality would definitely be a good one and, to have uh, a preference for. I'm not sexually attracted to politicians because they're liars. If you well, they're barely human. Huh? Well, they're barely human. Well, it's not, I don't care. It's just, if you're, um, if you, if you're fucking in law enforcement, you're automatically fucking disqualified. And, and teenagers are really? automatically, yeah, I don't fucking, well, it's not that, it's not that I don't like them. It's just I'm paranoid. Okay, just but we'll get to that later. Okay, I don't. I really don't like kids and teenagers. Well, they are an acquired taste, um, uh, and they can yeah. be quite. I mean, you know, some teenagers are. When I say teenagers, I'm of course talking about eighteen and older. Um, most of them are just figuring out what they're doing, and they often prefer to have people much closer to their age. And if they don't, then they're looking for guidance. And um, I do yeah. not want that responsibility. Get the fuck <laughs> away from me, kid. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I just told a, I just told a teenager to stop fucking following me today on Twitter. Yeah, on Twitter. It's just mm. get the fuck out of here, kid. Mm. I do not want to be at least he, I am taking some responsibility for all of this craziness and uh, outlandishness here. You see, I I do, have, I do have the ability to influence people. I've done it before. Oh, we all do. 
I used to do it all the time and influence the the the, the corrupt the youths, mm-hmm. if you will. And um, I just decided never hurt anyone. Yeah, I, I just decided that um, I no longer wanted um, like younger people watching my channel because I don't want to be responsible. Do you have a lot will. of younger people watching your channel? Um, it used to be years ago. Yeah. It used to be, I, th- I think, like when I started, like, well, we were all like, younger years ago. Well, well yeah, but I think, when <laughs> I, well, yeah, uh, so let's say, let's say, like, six years ago, let's mm-hmm. say six years ago, right? I was six um, years younger, yeah. Six years ago, I discovered that, and I'm still an adult at this time. I remember six years ago looking at my demographics and seeing that a lot of um, teenage boys watched my channel. And Hmm. I was like, you know, I didn't have a problem with that. But the older I got, the more I realized that, um, you know, that my ability to, like, corrupt people and the kind of comments that I would get on my channel and the kind of private messages people would send me. Like I would get questions for advice from a lot of young people, which at first I thought was very flattering. I thought, wow, this is a really good chance to inspire what, people. What and kind then, of advice? Oh, people, they ask me, um, this is one of the, all the time. Um, how do I, um, I feel like people are always asking me to, to like about secrets in their lives. They, they always say, don't tell anyone. Like, who the fuck mm-hmm. am I going to tell? I don't tell them that, but who the fuck am I going to tell anyway? Mm-hmm. But a lot of people seem it's like, oh, well, he's a man in a mask. He knows how to keep a secret. And I guess that line of thinking is kind of accurate, but that's not why. I'm well, people to like to give themselves in out they like to give themselves permission to oh, tell right. someone something and that they would not normally say and that's completely fine i understand why people view me as an outlet but the reason why i'm so good at keeping secrets is not because of any sense of honor or you know respect to privacy i do believe in that anyway but because honestly at the end of the day i don't care Mm-hmm. I don't care whatever secrets or whatever skeletons you're hiding in there. Uh, people are hiding in their closet. I really, I couldn't really give a shit, honestly. Mm-hmm. So besides, besides no. secrets, what were they kind of advice were they asking you for, though? Um, it's hard to remember anything specific. Like, okay, um, a but lot of people would a lot of people would ask me uh, about, um, like. They would ask me about advice about uh, like coming out, like coming out of it. That, that is one. Mm. Um, that is one thing that people came to me for about coming coming out, coming out as gay, as as gay as trans as whatever. Okay. Um, now, did you used to identify more? I know you don't particularly like labels at this point, but did you used uh, to use any? Um, out in public, of course, people. And- see me as a man and I don't mind that Mm -hmm. Um, but um, as far as I would say I'm not asking and I'm not asking you to expose elements of your past life like I understand you've moved on I'm just just curious if at one point in your life you maybe correctly or incorrectly had a more defined idea before you became more expansive let's say because we usually ha- get to the point where we at least start with an idea of where we're like who we are and where we're going and it either it either right. works or it doesn't work and in your right. case it sounds like it didn't work right right i mean i tried to make it work but it's like um throughout my life um throughout everything i've been through uh, i constantly questioned my own humanity and when you lose your own humanity. You start to ask yourself questions like, you know, "What does it really mean to be human? What does it mean to be a man? What that, is a, what is a man?" Now, you mean that philosophically? You're questioning your humanity, not in the like otherkin sense of the word, correct? I would say a little bit of both. I, I'd say that 
to an extent they are indeed connected um it's like i have no real desire to to like start chopping parts off of my body i have no real desire to well, start, that's probably good. I, have no, I have no desire to start fucking surgically fucking with uh my my the face beneath here like the or that's I, I have nothing I have, I have no desire to change what i was born with because it's yours the, well because of the risks involved and the money that i don't have in order to do it in an not ideal mention, world like i said mention, there's no evidence that it actually has any lasting effect on most people who do it anyway so well, it, like, like i said if i had if i had it my way i would be phantom lion all the time no matter mm -hmm. what no matter what that means mm -hmm. uh, in terms of my like in terms of my sexuality i don't I mean, this is why I'm able to give people advice so fluidly. It's because um, you're fairly fluid yourself. In terms of who I get into bed with, uh, I am very cautious, mind you. It's like, oh yeah, I, I, it's almost like I, I, I give job interviews in order to have <laughs> sex. <laughs> And you should. People should be that careful. Yeah. Well, as long um, as money is not being involved, that would be a different kind of job interview. I'm, I'm kidding. Not, I'm, I'm kidding. not. I'm not. I'm getting a text. FBI. Okay. Ignore. Uh huh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I'm sure. <laughs> um, anyway, it's just the, the thing is, as um, as someone who really i'm just i'm surprised that no one's figured it out yet if figured, people are, figured if, what people out. Are, if people are watching this and going well oh, phantom lion fucks dudes he fucks what he fucks who I'm, like, I'm, I'm i'm more shocked than that people that you guys just have figured that out and i haven't exactly been candid about it because i don't regard my sexuality as a huge vocal point in my life. It's just something. Mm, yeah. Sex is something that we all kind of need on a biological level. So therefore I don't make a big deal out of it. Um, and no, I, I see where you're coming from. Cause a lot of yeah. people put entirely too much emphasis on their sexuality, particularly if they're anything other than strictly heterosexual it makes it into a point where they're, uh, kind of trying to establish their identity, their personality, based yeah. on their sexual preferences, and it's extremely it, it, irritating. Exactly, exactly. And this is the kind of advice that people would come to me for because people they don't know, whether they realize it or not. Some of them did, some of them didn't. Uh, but whether they realized it or not, they were attaching a certain persona to their sexuality, like with. That, well, you with have to. Of course, with a particular group or even just one person, there's that persona. And then with your family or whatever, you're this person that your family thinks you are. And that, that, that sucks to hide that part of yourself. So people would come to me for like basically identity advice. Mm -hmm. they, know, they know that I basically live with this identity and that and they know that I'm someone else out in the real world so they come to me for that sort of advice and I, at first i really liked giving it i really liked uh, being able to inspire people but then and honestly nothing in particular happened for me to just stop talking to teenagers thankfully um it's just i just really just looked inside and i just self-reflected and i said well do i really want to be the guy to go to for this sort of, I mean, I don't think that I'm, I mean, take a good look at me. Does Phantom Lion scream good role model? No, I don't. Realistically. Well, I find it helpful to, uh, when you're talking about giving advice to people, first off, I mean, you should probably, hopefully you have good advice to give. That's the first criteria. Um, no, no, no. Not, well, no, no one can do it all the time. Um, I myself have, as I get older, find that I'm still drawn to young people. Um, I like the energy. I like the discussions, the vitality. Um, but I 
I also find that there are, especially since I happen to talk mostly with a lot of young and bi men, that a lot of them have not so much even just questions, but it's hard being young, being a young man in particular in our society. I mean, yes, being a young woman sucks too, but it's much harder for men, I think, because in general, no one really gives a shit about men. Men are mostly disposable in the eyes of society unless they're part of the select few and even in my opinion if you bleed red everyone's disposable (laughs) welcome to the welcome to the shit show cats Mm -hmm. it it sounds like it would make an excellent hot topic (laughs) (laughs) t-shirt or is that more spencer's I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm just an old boomer. It's that, 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 that was very... That, that got really dark. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I, it's the internet. Welcome, everyone. Edgy alert. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that's another thing. If mm-hmm. anyone can actually lay claim to being an edgelord, it's me. I'm an actual edgelord. You know why I'm an edgelord? Because I don't try to be one. This is all natural for me. Mm-hmm. Are you saying that all the other edgelords are posers? Not, not necessarily. I would have to really get to know them. But a lot of people, a lot of people, they put way too much effort into it, and they just yeah. come off as cringy. In, yeah, they don't come off as genuine. Yeah, and of course, I'm fucking with you a little bit myself because well, yeah, that, I, I do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, well some, some, sometimes when people. Um, when they when they just um you you do raise um a very interesting question even though you just did so i, I, I felt think, it more i felt it warranted a uh, a serious response yeah one of my uh one of my older clients that i used to take care of uh called it kidding on the square and i actually really like that expression <laughs> yeah kidding on the square uh it's it's important it's very important to have a sense of humor. Oh yeah, without humor, there is literally nothing. So I, and with with my even with my sexuality, I I do have fun sometimes. Like I leave. Like, I would little, hope so. I leave little clues as to what my sexuality is. Like, if you don't know that, I I swing. Both I ways. Swing, if, if you don't know that I swing both ways or for all teams or whatever you want to call it, if you don't know that I, I swing for all teams, then you haven't been t- paying attention. Like you could say like, um, what did, what did they say? In, uh, I forget what the, you know, the movie, the interview, like leaving little gay breadcrumbs for people. Like the, all the dick jokes on my Twitter. Just look at my Twitter feed. It's, pre- it's pretty. Yeah. Well, I mean, the fact that the fact that, the fact that yeah, <laughs> the fact that you um, reposted that uh, one em- emoji survey that uh, myself and my friends were using about drop your five emojis and see if you're a top or a bottom. And I told, and I remember you asked you asked me something, and I said, uh, "Why I assumed that you weren't." Strictly straight, and I said, "Well, because strictly straight guys don't know about tops and bottoms. You sh- it just wouldn't come up in a nor- in a strictly straight setting. It, it, it wouldn't, and that's how you figured that out. Um, mm-hmm. That and also, pretty much everyone I talk to on Twitter is, um, I, I love men of all kinds because I mean, and most of my conversations are not sexual or anything like that. But it just seems that I attract an inordinate number of gay, bisexual, and straight." like str8 men wait um, wait a second you you like men i love men um oh, and have very little use for women. you're 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 i'm a homosexual you're really, professing, you're really professing that too much i think you might be a closet heterosexual you know it's possible that i might <laughs> actually you know like it's when i drown myself in dick i'm really just crying out for pussy that that's really what's going on well i mean i'm here mm-hmm. <laughs> was, was, was that the point of this whole thing? Was this just an elaborate way for you to attempt to seduce me, Phantom? Line? Yes, yes. It's this. This was all a giant hookup. Mm-hmm. Um, Tinder, grinder, eat your heart out. Yeah. Fucking Google. What is this shit? Google Meet. Yeah. Yeah. Google meet. Yeah. That's the real meeting. But yeah. 
Oh god. Google, Google meat spelled with an A. Mm-hmm. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh that oh that would be that would be a I could just imagine uh, machine lear- using machine learning algorithms. We will find you the perfect sexual partner based on your past experiences. <laughs> oh my god, that's and, and if funny and terrifying. In, uh, if you punched in your address, you'll fucking receive free condoms and dental dams. Uh, here, I, ha- I actually have a, a Google smart device in my home. I'm going to see what it does when I say, "Hey Google, find me a man." <laughs> It's saying something, but it's all muffled. I don't know what it's saying. That's hilarious. Also, any I, for anyone whose smart device I just triggered by um, saying the dreaded OK goo uh, hot word, I apologize. Sorry. Not, oh, shit. It's playing music. That's Oh, God. That's what it's doing. It's playing. Hey, Google. Stop. I, I can't hear anything. Was it playing It's Raining Men or something? I wish. I wish that, that was great. Um, that, oh, it's and it's still playing something great. You can just edit that in and post, right? Just fucking... Uh, well, well, actually, no, you might get a copyright flag. Never mind. Uh, yeah, no. I'm... Uh, I've, hopefully you could not hear what it was actually playing. I just had to unplug the stupid thing. <laughs> uh, all right. Well... Like I said, this has been a conversation I never expected to have, but definitely one I'm glad we did because I don't I don't know how you would classify this. I'm not really even sure how to classify you, and I suppose that's the point. If there is, that is that, that is um, that is kind of the point. Um, it's like I don't really bother with making it anymore. It um, it should be pretty obvious that um, someone that dresses up like this and says, this is the real me, and if they're, they're serious about it, you really got to think, um, well, shit. Um, a lot of people, they, they, they try to define me, and they try to, they, they makes their head spin. If there's any point, it's, um, well, I do enjoy people's head spinning. You, in that, in that, run, in that run, sense, run. you are. Yeah. In, that, in to, that sense, you are a natural edge lord because you like to fuck with people. Yeah, and it's so e- it's so easy these days. Um, oh yeah, people are people are sensitive. It's like people troll themselves. Really, it's um, and. Uh, I don't view like being an edge lord as like so this deep responsibility that I have. I just kind of do it, and people are people are auto offended uh, by just just by my presence. Um, the only real label that I accept is I, Phantom is Phantom Lion. So. I, my- that throws people through a fucking loop because they can't pin any of their own custom shit on me. They can't pin any of the societal norms on me. Uh, and that pisses people off that they can't attach a whole bunch of preconceived notions to who I am. I mean, they can't do it because um, that, that's, you could say that's the superpower that this provides me. It's just, it could, <clears throat> This persona, it is mine, and it is not only mine, but it is me. I created it, therefore, it is mine, and it is me, and there's really not much people can really do about it. Um, and if people, they, they disagree, that's okay, that's fine. Um, I don't really do this to satisfy others. If I did, I would be out there convincing or at least trying to convince and meet everyone that I see that this is me. And all I really do is just, I give them the first part. And if that's up to them, whether they accept it or reject it, uh, I'm not going to force people. That's another thing that I have. And this is a lesson that's taken me a long time to learn. 
I can't control anyone but me. Mm, yeah. Outside of my mind, outside of what is internal, the world out there, you, the internet, I have no control over it. And that's a very powerful lesson. I think the more people realize that. Yeah. That's, that would probably be the most profound thing that really anyone could learn about themselves is that trying to control other people is not only useless, but harmful like to yourself and to everyone else because you'll never be able to control another person. You can only hope to influence others by influencing yourself, by controlling yourself. And that's another reason why I stopped giving advice to younger people. That's another reason why I, I didn't want young, younger people watching my channel because I realized that influencing people is possible. If people, if you let other people, they will control you. Mm -hmm. And they, they can control you. The funny thing about control is that um, I guess there's a fine line between controlling someone and influencing them, but always. Um, oh yeah, and, so it, but that's individually always, determined. So, yeah, exactly. That's not always a bad thing. No, not at all. Everyone needs a measure of control in their lives, or we would literally be animals. And even animals have quite a bit of control over themselves by nature and each other. And this is why I choose. This is another reason why. Um, I walk this path, you can say, because to a large extent, I acknowledge that I am very much an animal. Hmm. I'm, just, I'm just one of the very few people that's willing to admit it. Well, I can definitely say that this has been the most unique conversation that I've ever had. Period. Not not even just on the internet. But. <laughs> oh, you flatter me. You uh -huh. flatter me. Well, on that note of flattery, everyone, this has been our Katsuke. I've been talking to the Phantom Lion. Please subscribe to his channel if you're over 18. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I will be interviewing other people in the future just to see, you know, who's out there. And I hope you'll join. Like and subscribe. And we will talk to you later. Don't stay up too late.